Is the Tor network responsible for making sure the load gets shared out? Yep, the Tor network does load sharing, for example, to stop denial of service attacks. You can imagine that one attack you might do is to denial of service this router here, and now anyone talking through him is going to have a problem. These circuits get re-established about every 10 minutes. So, you know, if one of them gets brought down, um, you're only going to have to wait that long. But actually, it's quite adaptive, and it will reroute. You could take off this layer and then go somewhere else. The, the bigger concern is what happens if um, untoward third parties are controlling some of these nodes. Now, that's very likely. Um, government agencies, for example, that want to know what's going on on Tor will control some of these nodes in the hope that they eventually control A and B. Um, and that happens from time to time. So they, um, there's a lot of research on Tor that goes into working out how to minimise the chance that both A and B are nefarious. That's the idea. Um, so this is why they sometimes call these guard nodes because usually you select some trusted ones and you only use those, for example. You don't pick at random. There's lots of complicated ways they do this. Um, but unless both the e entry and exit nodes or you're sniffing on the network just near them, unless both of those are compromised, it's really very, very difficult to work out what it was that I did, right? apart from the fact that I installed Tor and used it. Is that the minimum number of servers or nodes that you need to go through to make it secure? Or? Yeah, if you, used, if, you used, um, if you used two hops, so if we got rid of this hop um, and just went straight to the server, then in some sense... Um, the chances of you controlling both the entry and exit nodes are, are increased. And, um, and also, the entry node now knows how, where it is in the hop, essentially, because it's sending another message not to a server but to an exit node. It must be an exit node, right? So there's too much information. On the other hand, four nodes or five nodes or six nodes, it doesn't really increase the level of um, security anymore. It just slows things down, right? So they don't, that's why they chose three. Right. Some people sort of pitch the idea of just having 20, right? but then nothing would work. It would be really, really slow. It'd be like one of those old spy movies in the 80s where they're trying to trace a phone call and it bounces across different continents. Exactly, yes. Very hard to trace, but actually um, you know, not helpful. And at the end of the day, if you control the entry and exit nodes, if, if there's 20 nodes in between, it doesn't really make much difference to you. right? You're still trying to correlate the input with the output. Another way to look at this is to look at Tor as a big cloud network that we can't really read. Right? So... This is my big cloud. Right, this is Tor or any other onion routing protocol. Right, here's me and here's servers. But there's also a bunch of other clients. We're all sending in messages and, and receiving messages out. Stuff happens here, encrypted stuff, right? Stuff that we can't really understand. They're all just Tor cells going back and forth between lots and lots of nodes, right? There's going to be three hops generally, but everyone's using different hops at different times. And then messages are coming in and out of these servers. So traffic analysis is where you control the input and the output and you can kind of work out what's going on. But that isn't an easy task, right? The output node might be in Venezuela or something like that, and the input node might be in Germany. You know, do you control both of those? It's difficult to know, right? So the point is that um, it becomes this sort of black box, right? And, 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 and the chances of you knowing enough information to de-anonymize people is, is not good.